Ten months have passed since the earthquake and tsunami that touched off the nuclear crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Today, the U.S. ambassador to Japan visited the site, and Lucy Kraft went inside the hazardous, restricted area around the plant for a rare look at the cleanup effort. To get inside the government-designated no-go zone, we had to put on biohazard jumpsuits, face masks, and we carried Geiger counters to detect any radiation hotspots. We passed rolling pastures and persimmon trees, silent now since 90,000 residents fled the nuclear disaster nearly a year ago. Our destination, 10 miles north of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, where the Japanese government has started an ambitious cleanup to make the area safe for humans to return. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. We're out of sight in the town of Minamisoma to see a demonstration of how to decontaminate the soil here. The plan is to rid buildings of radioactive particles and remove much of the topsoil from an area about the size of Connecticut. <laughs> Radiation levels still remain dangerously high. He's explaining that this is an area of around three microsieverts per hour. Unlike other areas, this is primarily residential. Microsieverts measure the amount of radiation detected in the air, and even three microsieverts is still 75 times higher than acceptable levels. Radioactive cesium can collect in twigs and leaves, and workers must remove them all. Rooftops, another radiation trouble spot, were scoured with high-pressure water. But it was the cleanup of a primary school that officials are most worried about. These bags contain the top inch of soil. It's highly contaminated. It's about to be buried right on the side of the school. This time in the playground. The lack of dump sites means hazardous waste is buried where it's dug up. That takes the radiation out of the air. A spokesman for Japan's Atomic Energy Agency told me by lowering the radiation, we hope to convince parents and children to return as soon as possible. It will be a tough sell. While elderly couples generally want to return to their homes despite the risks, many families say they'll never come back. As we exited the no-go zone, everyone was thoroughly scanned for radiation. Nothing out of the ordinary was found. This cleanup was a trial run, but the government says it will begin a full-scale effort later this year. Lucy Kraft, CBS News, Fukushima. Plans are underway to use an industrial endoscope to examine the inside of a damaged reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant now that all reactors have been cooled. This will be the first opportunity to see the interior condition of a containment vessel since nuclear fuel melted down at the number one, two and three reactors in March last year. On Tuesday, workers enter the number two reactor building to drill a hole in the vessel wall where the endoscope will be inserted. The instrument can withstand high levels of radiation. Tokyo Electric Power Company, the plant operator says workers were exposed to up to 3 millisieverts of radiation during the drilling process. 40 workers had rehearsed the job at the plant's number 5 reactor to minimize their exposure. 40 workers had rehearsed the job at the plant's number 5 reactor to minimize their exposure. TEPCO says the operation went smoothly and it will insert the endoscope on Thursday as scheduled. Japanese officials are widening their investigation into radioactive construction materials. It's feared that uh, concrete used in a new building has been contaminated from the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The move comes after higher than usual levels of radioactive cesium were detected in an apartment building in Nihonmatsu City. Five of the 12 families living in the building say they want to move elsewhere. The concrete was made from crushed stone supplied by a quarry in Namiya Town, Fukushima Prefecture. The town was designated as an evacuation zone after the nuclear accident. The state and local governments are investigating the shipments. They say gravel from the quarry was sold to more than 200 construction firms.
They plan to check nine other sites that supply construction materials. All the sites lie within evacuation zones or in radiation hot spots further away. Well, the operator of Japan's crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant is boosting electricity rates for its corporate clients. Tokyo Electric Power Company says the rates will go up an average 17 percent beginning in April due to the rising costs for thermal power generation. TEPCO President Toshio Nishizawa said Tuesday that the hikes will affect right around 240,000 business users with contracts of 50 kilowatts or more each. The company's fuel costs for thermal power generation are expected to climb by about $10 billion this fiscal year. That's because the utility has shut down some nuclear plants for checkups after the Fukushima accident last March. TEPCO says higher electricity bills are unavoidable because it's not clear just yet when the operation of these nuclear plants will resume. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency is taking steps toward regaining the confidence of the public. <laughs> It's expected to make its first report during the day on stress tests at two reactors. Operators hope this might lead toward restarting halted plants. They'll still have to get approval from local municipalities. 49 of Japan's 54 reactors are halted because of concerns they could be vulnerable to earthquakes and tsunami. The government ordered the computer simulated stress tests be carried out before the reactors could be restarted. The safety agency has received the results for 14 of them. Experts will meet during the day to give their assessment of the tests for two reactors at the Ohi nuclear plant in Fukui prefecture in central Japan. They're expected to conclude that the tests were appropriate. The operator Kansai Electric submitted a report that the reactors could withstand an earthquake 1.8 times the intensity and a tsunami four times the height of the estimated maximums for the area. The government of Fukui Prefecture has criticized the stress test, saying they do not take account of the lessons of the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. The International Atomic Energy Agency plans to send experts to Japan to check the government's evaluations of the tests. The 10 members of the team are expected to arrive next Monday. They too plan to inspect the reactors at the OE plant. Iran has rejected a U.S. warning letter that suggests retaliatory action if it closes the Strait of Hormuz. Iran has threatened to shut down the gateway to the oil-rich Persian Gulf if Western countries strengthen their sanctions against its oil exports. Ali Akbar Velayati, an advisor in international affairs to the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, told an Iranian newspaper that the letter from the U.S. President contains no new information. An Iranian foreign ministry spokesperson also said on Tuesday that the letter did not have any contents that could lead to a new development. But he indicated that Iran has a positive stance on the reopening of talks with the West over Iran's nuclear program. The spokesperson also suggested the country's willingness to cooperate with an inspection team from the International Atomic Energy Agency that is preparing to visit Iran's nuclear facility.